what's something you did that you later found out was illegal? I was traveling, and on one leg of the trip, what I thought was a two-hour layover was actually a 26-hour wait. I didn't have the right visa to leave the airport, and the customs guy said I wouldn't be able to stay overnight. So, I asked him if I could buy a visa anywhere at the airport. He gave me a price, but it was in the local currency, and I didn't know the exchange rate. The ATM would only dispense USD for an American card, so I took out $100 and went back to the desk. I handed the customs official the money and asked, Is this enough? It wasn't until I saw him put it in his pocket and then stamp my passport that I realized I had inadvertently paid a bribe. Story 2. I took what I assumed was a free mint chocolate from a bowl at the pay station of a Mexican restaurant. After we had left, my then-boyfriend kindly pointed out to me that those were 25 cents each and started laughing at how I just nonchalantly took a piece. I asked him to turn around so I could pay, but he didn't, saying not to worry about it. I went back the next day to give them their quarter, and the manager thought it was really funny. He said it happens all the time, but no one had ever returned to acknowledge their mistake and make amends. Story 3. I passed my driving test on a Wednesday, bought a car on the following Friday, and was commuting to work on the motorway by the following Monday. All good. Fast forward several years. I had to use my car's logbook for something. I think I was changing my insurance company or something. It was a while ago, so my memory is hazy. I couldn't find it, so I went fishing around through every drawer in the house, and when that turned up nothing, I started going through old boxes of files and stuff. Eventually, I came across an envelope addressed in my handwriting to the DVLA. So I opened it, confused. Inside, I found my driving test pass certificate, all the forms for applying for a full driving license, and a postal order to pay for the license. This alone should indicate how long ago this was. My first realization was that I had completed all of the necessary steps, except for actually posting the envelope. My second realization was that I had been driving for years without a license, which in turn meant that my insurance was invalid, so I was also driving without insurance. Both of these actions are very much illegal in the UK. I phoned the DVLA straight away and explained what had happened. The person I spoke to mentioned that this wasn't an unusual occurrence and asked me when I had actually passed my test. He winced a bit when I told him and mentioned that if it had been just a couple of years, they would have just honored the test certificate and issued my license. However, since I had been driving like this for 13 years, luckily without a crash or incident, they couldn't do that, and I would have to retake both the theory and practical tests. And that's how I ended up committing a 13-year-long inadvertent crime spree and had to pass my driving test twice. Story 4. Every Sunday, my dad would get donuts and buy the Sunday paper from the kids outside the grocery store. I remember this one time we went inside the store to buy something. I saw he had like 50 cents in a cup holder, and I took it to buy one of those gold necklaces from the gumball machine. This was the early 90s, and all my favorite athletes, musicians, and the cool kids at school had chains, and my naive seven-year-old self thought they got them from the gumball machines at the grocery store. I was never allowed to buy anything from them, so I figured while my dad was shopping, I'd pretend to use the restroom and finally get one. After we checked out, he asked me for the 50 cents from his car so he could buy the paper. I told him I didn't have it, but he knew what I had done. He asked to see what I bought, and I confessed I had bought one of those gold chains and got one that said state. I explained that it would make me look so cool because nobody else's chain I saw had writing on it. I seriously thought I was so lucky and was destined to be the coolest kid in my second grade. I vividly remember my dad taking it out of the little plastic egg it came in laughing and telling me it didn't say state, but Elvis in cursive. I honestly was terrified he was going to keep it and sell it to teach me a lesson, but he gave it back to me. And you better believe I rocked that 50 cent Elvis fake gold chain at school for like three days until it broke at recess. I have never been as cool in my 39 years of existence as I was those three magical October days rocking my Elvis chain. Story 5. We had a fake rifle, the kind people would march with in parades in the 60s. It was all wood with a metal barrel, but it looked real. I took it to school for show and tell in like third grade. This was maybe 1975 or so, decades before school shootings were a thing. When I walked into the classroom with it, I brandished it and shouted, all right, this is a hijack. Everyone laughed, including the teacher, but I was forced to bring it to the office and leave it there for the rest of the day. Story six. When I was 18, my grandmother passed and I had to go to her funeral in France. I wasn't attached to her since we only met twice but we needed a member from the North American contingent to make an appearance. I volunteered. It turns out she had passed in a small room 
in an ancient family home in the French countryside. Next to her death room was a huge room full of old bottles of alcohol. No one wanted them. Me, being 18, I also volunteered to check the booze. I found a bottle of very old absinthe, like over 100 years old. The seal was intact, so I decided to bring it home to North America. I later discovered that absinthe would have been considered a narcotic because of the wormwood. I only declared one bottle of alcohol to customs. I still have it 18 years later, and it tastes disgusting. Story 7. I put Vicine in the sauce of my leftovers because I was tired of my leftovers being stolen. It turned out it was the doctor who owned the practice I was working at at the time. He felt terrible and fell asleep at his desk between patients that day, and I never ate my lunch again. We never talked about it, my manager never talked to me about it, but a couple of co-workers knew what had happened. I looked it up afterwards and was shocked at just how bad things could have ended and how lucky I got that he wasn't seriously injured or hurt. Apparently, ingesting Vizine isn't just a throw-up like Ipecac, as it had been portrayed to be in the movies. It can cause some serious heart issues and low blood pressure, among other issues. Ingesting Vizine is potentially fatal. Do not poison your food or others' food with it. It's not funny and it's not a joke. I wish I hadn't done it and would not do it again. I made a serious mistake as a teenager that could have followed me around for the rest of my life had things gone even slightly differently. Story 8. My mother wanted me to apply to colleges that were local so I couldn't move away. I absolutely did not want to stay home and go to the local Christian community college or the local party college. This was in 2007, so no online colleges as far as I knew then. I paid my friend to send in his applications to those colleges way early, knowing his qualifications were lacking. I took his denial letters and edited them on my school computer to look as if I had been denied application. I copied the envelopes, put my name and address on them, and added postage. Then I paid a different friend with a car to drive to the other colleges and drop the letter in the outgoing mail from those schools' on-campus post offices. I applied to the colleges I wanted to go to and was accepted with scholarships. The real and fake letters arrived on the same day. I didn't realize it was mail fraud until my therapist pointed it out recently by saying, you were so desperate to escape your mother, you'd risk going to jail. And I was like, oh, that was illegal? Shit. Story 9. When I was in middle school, my dad would give me $20 a week for lunch. I was rarely ever hungry at lunch, so I just ended up saving the money. One day, someone asks to borrow a dollar to buy snacks, and they'd pay me back with a quarter as interest the following week. I agree, and it becomes a thing. Next thing I know, more people are quietly borrowing money from me and paying me back, and it kind of snowballs to the point where I even had teachers borrow money from me once in a while. During this period, I had lamented to my buddies that one or two folks who had borrowed from me often were avoiding me because they couldn't pay me back. Someone offered to collect the money for me if they could keep some of what they got. It sounded like a good deal, so I agreed. I eventually stopped doing it because I felt like people were only using me for my money. I tried to reinvent myself when I started high school, Years later, I realized that I had inadvertently been a loan shark. Story 10. Young me, over 21, but I'm in my 40s now, and this was quite some time ago, had the bright idea that screw paying for booze on airplanes. I'll just bring my own shooters, which are only one Oz, and put them in a freezer bag and have them in my carry-on item. No one said anything to me when I went through TSA. Nobody said anything. Nobody was paying attention, as I produced them from my backpack when the flight attendant was serving me my Coke. But I was nice and sauced when the flight attendant came to pick up our trash, and I handed her a pile of shooters. I wasn't belligerent or rowdy or disruptive. I just sat there in silence watching in-flight movies while drunk off my ass. And that's probably the only reason why the flight attendant issued me a warning, instead of making sure law enforcement wasn't waiting for me at the end of the flight for drinking my own booze. Hmm. That day I learned, tittle that FA regulations prohibit alcohol consumption on a flight unless it's served by a flight attendant. Subscribe, please. Happy face.